Hi guys, um, let's now take a look at how we can apply the principles we learned about um, <coughs> chemical equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle to um, a very important process in industry. It's called the Haber process or Haber Bosch process. Discovered by these two German scientists. Now, um, as a background <coughs> to the motivation for this process, um, let's take a look at nitrogen and why it's so important. Well, <coughs> nitrogen is a very important um, component of proteins. So, proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Now in order to acquire this nitrogen um, in the food chain, plants are, are our most important link. But then um, plants, they can't take in the nitrogen from air, even though 78% of air is nitrogen. Um, this is because of the extreme unreactivity of nitrogen. So it needs to be converted to s into some other form such as ammonia before it can be absorbed. So the Haber process is basically a process of um, making ammonia and it was discovered by Fritz Haber. So a little bit about Haber. It's World War I and they needed ammonia not to feed people but to make bombs so he discovered this process to make ammonia and make lots of bombs but in the process he fed a third of the world's population Because that's where most of our fertilizer comes from. The other two thirds comes from nitrogen fixation by bacteria in the ground. Okay. So um, that's quite an interesting thing. And ironically, he got awarded the Nobel Prize in 1918. Um, so go figure. Anyway, let's get to the uh, actual process itself. And so here's the equation for the Haber process. I'm going to take nitrogen gas and react it with hydrogen gas in a reversible reaction to form ammonia gas. So I'm just going to balance this, two of that and three of those um, for this reaction to occur. This is an exothermic reaction. So the enthalpy is negative, 92 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's, um, that's the Haber process. Basically, you take nitrogen, hydrogen, and you form ammonia with it. So let's begin um, by taking a look at the effect of temperature on this reaction. So temperature. Now because the reaction is exothermic, then reducing the temperature actually yields more ammonia. So reducing temperature gives more ammonia. Right? Why is that? Because um, since this is an exothermic reaction, I can think of heat as being a product of the reaction. Because as the reaction proceeds in that direction, it gives off heat. So it's exothermic in the forwards direction, and that also means that it's endo in the reverse. So I'll just write it down for reference. Now, because it's uh, giving off heat, when I reduce the temperature, then by 
Le Chatelier's principle, the system wants to restore the previous temperature. And how can it do this? It can do this by, um, by releasing heat. And which direction releases heat? Well, the products side releases heat. So the equilibrium shifts to the right to refurnish that heat and bring it back up to um, the previous temperature. Well, or an attempt to do so. So I'll just put LC there to indicate Le Chatelier's principle at work. However, low temperature means um, a slower rate of reaction, and that's not desirable, right? A slow rate of reaction is not desirable. So instead, what we want is um, a compromise. So it turns out that the compromise temperature is about uh, 450 degrees Celsius. In fact, it goes from about 300 to 550 degrees Celsius. But that will give us um, a good rate while you know not um, severely compromising the uh, yield of the uh, ammonia. Because this is a reaction involving gaseous components, we can also take a look at the effect of pressure on um, the equilibrium. So let's cut to pressure here. Okay. So second pressure. So let me just bring back that equation here. Um, remember the key idea with pressure is to look at the number of molecules um, as I will elaborate in a minute. So I have one nitrogen, three hydrogens here which makes a total of four molecules on the left side and I have only two molecules ammonia here so two molecules on the right side okay. Let me just write that down. Four molecules to two molecules. Oh, this is really reversible, so let's do that. So, um, turns out that what happens is when you increase the pressure, you get a greater yield of ammonia. Now, why would that be? Well, um, if you recall, uh, what happens is that on the left side, we actually have a higher pressure than on the right side because there's more molecules here and there are less molecules here. So we have less molecules hitting the walls here at the same kinetic energy, therefore less force is imparted to the walls and less pressure. So if you increase the pressure, um, then by Le Chatelier's principle, system wants to bring it back down. And how can he do that? He can do that by decreasing the number of molecules because decreasing the molecules will decrease the pressure and which side has less molecules the right side has less molecules so the equilibrium is pushed to the the right side I beg your pardon so the right side has less molecules so it's pushed to the right and that will somewhat relieve the increase of pressure that I imposed upon the system right but in practice pressure is expensive because I'm going to need to strengthen my pipes to withstand a higher pressure, 
I'm going to need to spend a lot of electricity on running the pumps to increase the pressure. So it turns out that this is also a compromise and um, the compromise value is about 200 atmospheres. So that's enough to give me you know, a fairly good uh, profitable yield of ammonia uh, while still you know, not spending too much money on my pipes and pumps, etc. Okay, the third thing um, that can help in the more efficient production of ammonia is the presence of a catalyst. Now, the reaction here involves breaking of bonds in the nitrogen and in the hydrogen before it can form bonds in ammonia. However, nitrogen has a very strong triple bond in it. So it's really hard to break. So what we do is we use a catalyst to help um, speed up this um, breaking of the triple bond. And it turns out that the most suitable catalyst is iron-based. So you use some iron-based catalyst to speed up um, the breaking of that triple bond and as you recall from the previous video on the basics of equilibrium this does not shift the equilibrium because the um, the rate of reaction in both directions in both forward and reverse re directions are increased by the same amount so it does not shift the equilibrium equilibrium stays the same but it will ink it will you know speed up the reaction so that um, that saves me money because in industry time is money so um, you want to try to do that the fourth and final effect we'll take a look at is how pressure I beg pardon how concentration can change the equilibrium so let's take a look at the effect of concentration Now, um, let me just write this down again real quick. Now, if you recall from the previous video, um, we can shift the equilibrium to the right by doing two things. We can either increase the concentrations of the reactants or we can decrease the concentrations of the products and in this case we're going to want to do both so how do we do that well um, we'll first remove the ammonia as it's being produced so we will remove ammonia from the mixture now because ammonia so let me just mark here on this scale, I'm going to show the boiling points. So ammonia has a higher boiling point than both nitrogen and hydrogen. So let's just draw hydrogen way down there because hydrogen is really small molecule. So there's less Van der Waals attraction. So it's got lower boiling point and ammonia is the largest molecule and the mixture, there are only three molecules in the mixture. There's ammonia, there's nitrogen, and there's hydrogen. And of the three, ammonia is the largest, hence it has the greatest Van Waals attraction and the highest boiling point. So what we do is that um, we send the system, we send the mixture through a coolant and reduce the temperature to about here. So we cool the mixture to about there, at which point the ammonia will liquefy. So this liquefies the ammonia while still keeping the nitrogen and hydrogen in the gaseous phase. And then we can take these guys and recycle them back into the um, reaction vessel so that you, know, you, you continue pushing more nitrogen and hydrogen to the reaction vessel in addition to new nitrogen and hydrogen coming in. So in that case, you will increase the um, reactants while not um, putting them to waste and you'll reduce the ammonia, hence 
um, pushing the equilibrium further to the right. So just to put it all together, um, I've drawn up a schematic of how this process um, could take place in industry. So we first send in the nitrogen and ammonia, nitrogen and hydrogen here, and when you hit the iron catalyst, they will react to form ammonia. And you pass them through this cooling vessel here, where I send a coolant in, and as the gases rise through this cooling vessel, ammonia will condense onto the t pipes here and drip down, gather here, and I can open this valve to collect um, whatever liquefied ammonia I have. So this is the process of removing ammonia from the mixture so as to push the equilibrium further to the right. And you have the catalyst here to speed up the breaking of the um, nitrogen nitrogen triple bonds and now I'm going to push the ammonia and nitrogen back into the incoming fresh nitrogen and hydrogen sorry I beg pardon it's the nitrogen and hydrogen that gets pushed back and in that case you recycle it and prevent wastage so right in here in the reaction vessel we're going to want to have about 400 degrees Celsius 200 atmospheres and some iron on the catalyst there to help um, speed up our reaction. This nitrogen will mostly come from the air because 78% of the air is nitrogen and hydrogen comes from methane. Um, typically it's, um, it's, it comes from methane. Uh, so so that's it, that's the Haber process and uh, I hope this was helpful in helping you um, get a better grasp of equilibrium.